Now, most of the graphs that you have in physics are going to be uh, using continuous data on both the y and the x axis. And this video is really about some of the fundamental basic rules that you probably should know and probably re recognize anyway at the moment. But these are just some of the rules about how to draw a graph. First of all, uh, you need to make sure that your uh, axes uh, cover more than half of the paper and also that the plotted area uh, of the actual points that you're plotting covers more than half that piece of paper. So if you've got a big piece of paper, then you need to make sure that you use it all. Now when it comes to your axes and actually what you uh, put on both the y and uh, the x-axis, effectively this is just my y-axis, when it comes to labelling you need to make sure that you go up in appropriate units. So if you go up uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 that's all very good. If you go up in 2, 4, 6, again going up in 2s is absolutely fine. You get into trouble when you, have, you go up in 3s. The reason being that if you had a value of maybe 4.7, where does it actually fit on this line? So if you go up in 3s, uh, that's incorrect and this one here doesn't give you uh, a nice set of data. I guess you can go up in uh, 4, so you might go 4, 8, 12, 16, because this is just double this one, so this is kind of okay. Um, you can also go up in 5, so 0, 5, 10, this one here is good. Again, this one here going up in 6s or 7s or 8s or 9s, these are just awkward scales. And my recommendation is that you don't go up in any of these. Okay. Um, when it comes to going up in 10s, uh, so 0, 10, 20, this one here is just the same as the scale here, but all that's, been done, all that's happened is it's been multiplied by 10. So again, this is appropriate. So when it comes to marking your x and y axis with your values, it's best to go up in 1s, 2s, 4s or 5s. Okay. The other thing about this is that you must label at a regular interval. So perhaps every, uh, every other large square. So this is basically a gap of about 2 centimetres between your values. And the other thing you must do is make sure that you go up uniformly. So we always have the same interval uh, within each gap on the graph. Okay, so there's some of the basics. What else do we need to do with the graph? We also need to just, uh, you know, think about convention. Okay, well, you might go up, uh, you always uh, number from the smallest number on the left to the largest number on the right. Uh, it's almost kind of too obvious to say, but uh, I've always seen that students do make some of these sort of small errors. So perhaps we go up in once. Now, you don't always have to start at zero. You might start, start perhaps at maybe four and you go up to 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. So you don't need to start at exactly zero when you're labeling the axis. The other thing that you don't need to do is if uh, you don't need to have this squiggle that you sometimes show in mathematics, you know, we know what the values you have on this y-axis because it says very clearly when you've labeled it. So this squiggle here isn't needed. What else do you need to know? You also need to maybe put down a title uh, just so that uh, people know what the graph is about, uh, very much uh, maybe x plotted against y. You also need to label your axes. And on each axis, what you need is both the quantity and also the unit, okay, separated with one of these slashes. And again, uh, the quantity and the unit on both the axes, okay. If you do that, uh, then it means that when you come to plot your data, it should, uh, be, should be plotted quite nicely. Um, you can plot with small crosses or you can use uh, very small uh, plus signs, okay? As long as the plotted area is greater than half the size of the piece of paper that you're plotting that graph on. And then what you need to do is maybe think about an appropriate line of best fit. So here I have my graph. What I have is maybe R in meters and time in seconds, okay? And what I've got is some data plotted uh, on a fairly large graph. Now when it comes to a line of best fit, uh, there are two sorts that we can really have. We have a curved line of best fit and we can also have a straight line and it's often the straight line which is more useful because it allows us to work out a gradient and maybe find a constant. Now when it comes to, well first of all this data here, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is sort of see if, if a straight line fits it. So if I sort of hold this up to the camera like this, you can always sort of, this is like what you do with your eyes, you can have a look at that data and see if it kind of sort of roughly fits a line, which I, I think it just about does. It's not the most reliable data. Now when it comes to drawing in your line of best fit, if you have a solid ruler, it's not very easy to see the points which lie above and below the line. So something which is better is to use a clear ruler. Now this one here uh, I got from the Institute of Physics. Uh, I was at a show and I got it for free. I'm not sure where you can actually buy them. But the beauty of this one here is that it allows you perfectly to see which points are above and below the line. And when it comes to drawing in your line of best fit, you want approximately an equal number of points above and below that line of best fit. Now, you shouldn't force a line of best fit where it doesn't want to go. Uh, if it's not going to go down to the origin, don't force it down there. 
Uh, so what I've got here is my line of S fit. I've got a couple of points above it and a couple of points uh, below it as well. So you may be just about to see this at the top. And uh, what I can then do is I can use this line of S fit to maybe work out the gradient or perhaps the y-intercept, which is what the next video is all about. Now, a final point about this line of best fit is do not ever join the dots. Uh, don't use a really thick line because that's quite hard to see. And the other thing is if you've got a particularly a curved line of best fit, uh, is try not to have this kind of sort of hairy line where you've sort of been sort of shading it in, okay? If you're going to do a curved line of best fit, it's best to kind of uh, just go for it freehand, one nice attempt. And again, it's always really important when you're doing these lines of best fit to use your pencil in case you make any mistakes.